What is up, everybody? Welcome back to RaceDudes.com, and welcome back to another one of our previews. Let's go to Del Mar, August 3rd. That'll be a Saturday race tune on the card. The Clement L. Hirsch Stakes, a grade one event going a mile and a 16th, $400,000 purse for the older Phillies and Mares. Field of eight in this one, and it's led by the favorite, number two, Adari Manor. But let's go through them one by one, and I'll give you who I'm picking. I'll start with the number one horse, Flying Connection. Don't give this horse much of a chance to win. Kind of has been beaten up a little bit by Adari Manor in the past, by pretty mischievous in the past. Another horse that's in this race, um, you know, might be better sprinting. Uh, you know, when you kind of look at this horse, uh, last couple of efforts, you know, not too bad. Um, you know, won a, a stake sprinting way back in the day, uh, one at a mile back in the day a little bit, but, uh, not a ton of wins on the resume going stronger than a mile uh, other than, um, you, you know, the race out at Sunland. That was one way back when uh, when this horse was a three-year-old. So uh, we'll see what happens here. I, I don't know. Mile 16th, probably within the realm. But like I said, gotten beat by Adari Manor a few times. So I don't know what's going to happen in this one, really, for her. Speaking of Adari Manor, she is number two. And look, she really needs no introduction. She's a horse that won five races in a row out here in Southern California before losing the Breeders' Cup Distaff last year. She was seventh, beaten three lengths. Came back this year in the Beholder Mile, was second, beaten three quarters of a length by Sweet Azteca, who's a very nice horse, um, and especially at that distance. And then stretched out to a mile and 16th and dominated the Apple Blossom and then stretched out to a mile and an eighth last time out in the Santa Margarita and dominated again. She's the one to beat. She's the one they'll have to catch. See if Bob Baffert can get another stakes victory with this one. Number three is Cilia, and I think this is the horse that um, is going to be the, the, the biggest challenger. Cilia is coming off of three straight victories in a row, an allowance race at Churchill Downs. We won by seven. That was on Kentucky Derby Day. She won the Shawnee at uh, uh, Churchill Downs as well and the Fleur de Lee. So three straight wins. Um, you know, last time out a mile and an eighth, she kind of, was not good out of the gate, kind of reared up, kind of got behind, didn't get that positioning, and still was able to win a hard-fought battle. She needs to kind of get back to a little bit of the sharper effort out of the gate. If you hop out of the gate here, you're probably not going to catch a Dari Manor. So she needs to break a little sharper. That's going to be the big thing. But uh, she comes in off three big races in a row. She does look to be the main challenger. Number four, Coffee in Bed. Coming in off of a second place finish behind the aforementioned Adari Manor in the Santa Margarita. Um, and and look, uh, won the Santa Maria two races back at this distance. Um, that's kind of the only big win on the resume. It's ran competitively a couple of other times, but it's also kind of been beaten up by Adari Manor a couple of times as well. She looks like a little bit of a long shot. Number five is Desert Dawn. Uh, this is another horse uh, finished third uh, uh, last time out behind a coffee in bed uh, was fourth two races back behind, you know, the aforementioned Adari Manor, who these Southern California horses have finished behind a lot. Uh, but, you know, this horse has been able to jump up and win races like this in the past and kind of does it. I don't know if you when you least expect it. I, I would say that, you know, you go all the way back to the Santa Anita Oaks. When her and Adari matched up when they were three, Desert Dawn was able to get the job done. The problem is she didn't win again until January 20th of this year. And, and it's just kind of like, it's kind of unexpected when she wins. She's only won three out of 21 starts. Uh, you know, got the maiden broke at six to one, won that Santa Anita Oaks at 14 to one. And then the Law Canada won at Santa Anita this year. She was nine to five in that one, but uh, it was a little bit of a weaker field, obviously. So, I hit the board type for sure. Winning, I don't know. It's going to be very interesting to see uh, if she can, you know, kind of turn the tables on some of these horses she's had trouble defeating. Uh, number six is Sugarfish as we go on down the list, list here. And I said for the older fillies and mares when I started, that's not true. You can actually be a three-year-old and run in this race as well. It's a little bit of a misstep on my part there. But uh, this three-year-old is a winner of three straight races, including a maiden special weight, three starts back, then the allowance, two starts back. And they won the Summer Oaks by nine and three quarters last time out at Santa Anita. And so that was a huge coming out party there. Going to have to step up and face older horses here. It's a, not an easy spot, but it's probably easier than taking Torpedo Anna on in her own division or something like that. So 
So they give it a shot here. Look at 12 to one. I, I, I kind of like her a little bit better than the five desert Dawn at 10 to one. I'll say that. So uh, as a long shot play makes sense. She's been dominant when she's been right. We'll see if she can get the job done here as she faces olders. Uh, the number seven, Olivia twist coming in off a fourth place effort, only beaten 14 and a half of the great lady two races back at Oakland park. She shipped out and ran sixth beaten almost 10 links in the dig a diamond stakes. Um, you know, did have a, a, a win at Sunland uh, to kick off her season and just not being competitive. Going to be hard to see her uh, being competitive in this spot. And then finally, the number eight, pretty mischievous. We'll see what happens with her. She's come off of a layoff and she ran third in the La Touraine and she ran a third in the Phipps uh, in her last two races. In the Phipps, she got beat by Randomize and Idiomatic, two very good horses. She got beat by Idiomatic in her debut race as well this season. Um, you know, we've seen her run very well at times we've seen her obviously she won the kentucky oaks uh as a three-year-old but you know i don't think her four-year-old races have been all that good so far shipping on here they're going to see what they've got they're going to kind of get her a race over the breeders cup track here at del mar so we'll kind of see what happens with her i think she comes in with a lot of proving to do uh she's a horse that's always going to take a little bit of money although she is eight to one on the morning line i i don't know that she'll go off that that large she might with adari manor in here but um, you know, maybe if she's eight to one, she's finally kind of the right price, you know, four to one against idiomatic six to one against idiomatic, she, you know, bet down to favoritism and most of her races aside from the Kentucky Oaks last year. So we'll kind of see what happens there, but I think she's got some proving to do in the spot today, which is weird to say from a horse that's one seven out of 12, I guess what I'm saying is, can't she step up and, and be successful against the older horses? I think that's kind of the proving that she needs to do. She's been uh, not not great so far, not terrible, but just not really close to winning in two starts this year. All right, that's the field of eight. And listen, Adari Manor's three to five, and Cilia's six to one. I got to go with the number three Cilia on top. I don't think the odds gap should be that wide. If you go for, okay, who is the absolute most likely winner, no odds attached to the horses, I do think Adari Manor gets a slight nod, but it's slight, and that's the key word. So, you know, if these prices hold up and Adari Manor's three to five and Cilia's six to one, I'm going with Cilia. I'll take a bet on her and I'll take my chances. Now, is that a little bit short on Adari Manor? Maybe we get to post time and she, her odds float up. I think she should be about nine to five against this group. And if you can get that sort of price, uh, I, I it, she becomes you know, I think a playable option, but if she's below that, I like her, but I don't like her enough to play her at a really short price. And that's why I'm going to go number three, silly on top. I think she is going to be the right price in this race. I, I look at her and Adari Manor very similar. Uh, I think they're close. I think with Adari Manor, we know she can beat up on the California horses. I don't think she's gotten a lot of challenges racing in California other than the breeders cup. And it didn't go all that well. Um, after they kind of shipped her and got her beat a few times as a three-year-old, they've kind of just kept her right here and it's been a great plan and she's done tremendous. I think she's got a big, big time competition and I kind of through her career when she's had competition, that's kind of up to her level. She'll get beat a little bit. And I, I think that's possible. So give me number three, Cilia on top to win the Clement L Hirsch. All right, guys, that'll do it. For my preview of the race, hit that like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you really like it. Want to get alerted anytime we do videos like this. And guys, most importantly, go to racingdudes.com and check out all the content there. And if you're betting on Del Mar, good luck to everybody.